Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is my second video on Hano Web Application Framework. Basically, it's a replacement for, let's just say, Express.js. You can use it to create REST APIs. Uh, in my first video, I just did a basic application allowing you to perform CRUD actions on a user object. I use database as my backend data store. In this one, I'm going to show you how to do file uploads with Hano. And so let's take a look and see what we got in here for file upload. This is what we get. I'm gonna build on this a little bit to help show you how to do file uploads with Hano. So let's, we'll start with the same project we had last time and we'll build upon that. Please check the previous video in the link below and please make sure you like, subscribe, share a video with your friends. All right, let's get to the code. Okay, so here we are in the same project. Once again, there's links to the full source code, so you can pause and download that source code if you wanna follow along in the source code. The first thing that we are going to do is the same way how we have a separate file here for our user routes, we will create a file, a separate file for images. And so let's just keep it simple. I'm images. And we're also gonna just follow the same approach that we have here of you know creating this new HANA object and then building routes on top of it. So we'll just take this to get started. We'll clear this out for now and we'll just leave that blank and we will, yeah, let's clean this up. Th that's good. Now let's go back to our index.ts and you see how we have our users route here. We want to return our images route. And then now we have our images route and then we need to import it. So now we've imported and now we have our images route. And we can do a quick test. So let's just go here. Go to our images route, and let's just say return hello Hano from images route. And go down here, npm run dev. All right, so we're back to our images route, and we're gonna, we're gonna do a post first, because we wanna create some images so that we have something to list. So we'll switch this to our post. And then inside of here, we're gonna parse it from the body. We're gonna get a parameter called images and it's gonna have our list of files that we wanna upload. And so we can test this. Let's test it with curl, because that's the easiest way to do it. And do I have an image, do I have an image file around? Let me get an image file. Okay, so I have this image file here. Hopefully I put it in the right directory. We'll find out in a minute. And then let me see what my curl statement needs to be. All right, this is the beginning of a curls file. Let me just edit it a bit. So what was our route again? Our route was images. So that's right. Content type multipart form. Our parameter is image. And we're getting that from here, body image. And then our, this is our file, and then this is where I might have my directory path wrong, but let's see. So it's called carbon.png. And let's see if I got it right. We should have console logged out some files. It's gonna console log that out here on the terminal. And so it is logging the file out here. This is the file that I found. Let's, let's get it to just dump the files here. So we'll have it return the files that it found. Let's save that, and then now, when we go back here, no, oh, it's not, uh, it's not, st it's not stringifying it or making it pretty. But you can see that it is getting the file that we passed up right here because it's dumping it out. All right. So the next step that we want to do is we need to get the data. Basically, we need to read the file into a buffer, and then we're going to take that buffer and we're going to save it. So the next step is like, how do we read this file that we have here? And since you, since you can pass an array of files in, we need to be able to loop through the files that are passed in and process each one. So that's our next step. But first, we're going to make sure that we have file or a file array. And we do that by, if we don't have files or if we have an array of files and a length is zero, then we're basically gonna return no files uploaded. We didn't get any files. Next, since I said we wanna process, since this can be an array, we want whatever we get to be treated as an array. So what we're gonna do is the value that we get here from files, 
we're gonna we're say, is it an array? If it is, then just pass it on. If it isn't, then take the one value we have and make it an array. And then this is the array, this is the array of files that we're gonna process. And like I said, what we, what we really wanna do is this, right? We wanna get each one of, we wanna basically get the file get its array buffer, convert it to a buffer, and this is the data that we want to save. But since this can be an array, we need to wrap this in an array. I'm going to say const process files, process images, but this is going to be new promise all, right? Because we want to process the array of files that we have. And so what will happen is we're going to take this file array, we're going to loop through each one, we're going to read the buffer, and this, this will get us a buffer, and then we're going to return that on success. But we, but we want a little bit more data than that that we want to return, right? So we want the name of the file. Uh, clearly, we want the buffer, which is the data. But we also want the type with the file type, and we also want to get the size. And then the buffer will be the data that will get returned from each one of the images that we processed. And then what we are going to do now is instead of just returning files, let's dump processed images and then that's what we'll return. Our files will be processed images. Let's format this a little bit and it's kind of let's just kind of walk through what we're doing again. Okay so we're going to get uploaded a list of an array of files inside of this body images. We get our files array here. We check to make sure that it is that there's something here to process. If not we throw our error if we do have files, we want to make sure that we're processing an array because you want to loop everything through this promise all. So even if there's one, we just make that an array. Then we take our promise all and we're going to loop through all the files in this file array. And we are going to get the data from reading the buffer. But then the object that we want to save in the database is the file name, file type, file size. And then we also need the data. And so what we'll do now is we'll just, let me just remove this. We'll just return that so that we can see that we actually have something to process. So let's run our, let's, first of all, let's save. Let's go back down here and let's upload that file again. Let's process that file again. So you can see down here, we're doing this curl. We're posting to images with that same file. And so clearly that's all the buffer data. So let me remove that for next time. So I think it's gonna fill up my whole thing. Yeah, let me remove the buffer data for now. We're going to clear our terminal down here, and then we're going to try to do it again. Okay, so you see that we processed our file, we have our name, we have our type, and we have our size. So this is the data that we want that we then need to add to the database along with the buffer, but we're, we're not returning the buffer. So the next step is to set up our schema to hold our images. So Let's go back to our database. We have our schema here. We could create a completely separate schema. We'll just go down here and we'll have a create images table. Let's see if we like what it's giving us. So we have our images table. We have our primary key. We have our name. We have our type. We have our size. But we're going to store our image in here as uh, a JSON blob. The so blob is not null, and then we want our created at and updated at. And then let's import our things we need from Drizzle. So we get our type, our blob type imported from Drizzle. And then the last thing is we're gonna create an index. So we have our ID, we're gonna create an index on the file name. So we get our, our name index and we'll use a table, so we'll create a unique index on that, so we'll make sure we only get unique file names in here. And then we want our types that will get returned back. So you can see this is the full type, and then this is our type when you're kind of inserting an object. Because you can see the things, the ID, the created at, and the updated at are not required. So, I believe we have our types for our image table. So let's kind of make this stand out a bit. And let's do it up here for our users so we can stay consistent. We have our user table. So now let's go back to our images route. And now we can actually write something to it. Insert into table into database. 
And so what we did is we imported our image table. So let's go back up here. We've imported our images table from our schema that we created. And then we're gonna write to our table. We have our file name type and then our buffer, I believe. Yeah, our buffer, is that image or image data? Let me just check. Where did my schema go? Up oh, it's image. All right, so that's right. So insert into database, and then we're just going to return the information. And then we probably, well, this is just going to give us a result. There's no image, failed to insert image into database, you turn to 500. It's probably not the correct. So it's just no, this, let's, let's fix this image result. I think I did this in the last video also. We want to be very clear. This is the result. It's not the actual image object. So we get the image result, but we're going to say if there's no image result, or if there's, because you see what we get back is we get back changes in the last inserted row ID. And so there should be changes, right? So if there's no changes, then there's an error. And if there's no image result, there's an error. Otherwise, we have a result and then we can return. And then let's actually just return the ID also. So if someone wants to get the object back, so they get the image result last inserted row ID. So that should be the row ID of the image that we just added. And then we know our image is saved and we're returning our data. Now we forgot a couple of steps here. So first of all, we created our, we added a new schema file. So we need to update that. And just as a refresher, if we go back to our package JSON, you can see that we added the scripts for generating the migration file and then the script for actually migrating it. So let's make sure we run those. And let's just create another terminal. Oops, npm run db generate. And then Migrate. Migration is applied. And then I have my tool here that I use to manipulate my database. And let's refresh it. And you can see I have my images table, show table. Uh, is that it? Well, there's no data in there. That's why we, we're not seeing anything. But you could see if we, let's kind of give us some more room with this. Let's close this for a second. You can see here's our images table with all the types and everything that we had set on it. So we know our table is set up. So now let's actually try to upload that file that we were playing with before over here. So let's go back and let's see what we get. So we can get rid of the message, but you can see here that we got our file, we got our ID, we got our name and we got our type and we got our file size. And then if we go back to our SQLite database and we look at our images table, we say show table, you can see we got our image uploaded and it's in there, but now we wanna get our image back down. So let's add a couple of more routes to our images to make it a little bit more manageable. So, and these should be quick because they're, they're pretty straightforward. So let's go to our index. No, not that. We want to go to our images routes and cursor will probably help us wrap up the rest of these. And so let's say get image by ID. And so you get the route, you specify the ID, it pulls the param, it selects based on the ID. Let's add the equal that comes from drizzle. So, we import the equal from drizzle. The other thing that we need to do is remember that this parameter coming in is a string and it needs to be a number. And so we'll put that there. And let's say, let's also check if there's no ID. So let's throw that error so there's no error. Um, otherwise it does the query, it gets the image and we'll return the image. Let's remove this message on the get the image. All right, let's delete an image, delete image by ID. Same approach, 
Use the param check to make sure, no ID provided, throw error, await, delete the image based on the ID, message deleted, image. That's gonna return a result. And so you're gonna get the result back on the delete. So now let's, let's test that because we saw, let's test the git and delete now. And this, we can use our Thunder client on this one. So let's open that up again. And it images one, and it returned our image along with this big buffer, which we don't want to scroll through. But that's not so. That's to get the image to get all the image data. We probably let's actually make this a little bit more reasonable. How you might actually use the API, right? So let's go back to our images route and let's change this. Let's. Change this to, oh, we'll leave the delete as is. We're gonna change this one up here. Get image metadata, metadata by ID, right? And with the metadata, in most situations, you don't want the buffer, right? You just want all the information about it without the buffer. So that's what we're gonna return here. So we're gonna return the ID, the name, the type, and the size. We are not going to return the data because you don't want the data. You just want the metadata. Metadata by ID, yeah. And what we'll do is, and let's, let's make this clear, metadata. And then we will create another one to actually download the image when you wanna use it in your application. And that will give you the, um, that will give you the buffer, the data, all the information that you really want. And so, download image by ID. Kind of the same, the usual. If it, we don't find it, no ID provided, return. This is where we actually get the body. This is where we run a return, but we want to want to do a little bit of something with that first, because remember we want this thing to be downloaded and utilized. So. When we return it, we want to make sure we set the content type, right? So this way, if we set the content type, then it knows it's an image and it'll be treated as an image and it'll be rendered appropriately in your application. Without that, you're not going to get the behavior that you want. So now we have two separate routes. One is to just return the metadata, which is the information about the image. And the other one is to actually use to download the image. So this is the URL that you'll use if you wanted to like this would be the route that you would use to place it inside an image tag because this will give you the buffer, the data, and everything that you need. And then I guess we want to list the images so we can see how, what are all the images that I have uploaded. And we'll kind of, we'll, we'll have that kind of riff off of this metadata one because this is, this is uh, you get by ID. If we just do a get metadata, then it'll just download everything. So let's do that. All images, all right. So up here, the way I excluded it was, since it was only one, I just excluded it from the return JSON. But here, since I'm selecting multiple items, right, I want to manage it inside of this select here. So what you can do is I can say const uh, get table. So this will get me all the table columns. And you notice it does not because the, the table column that is missing, right, is image. But I don't want image, so I'm only gonna ask it to get me these, right? And then I'm going to place those values in here. And then the only result that I will get here in these images, as you can see, it does not include the actual image data. It just gives me the metadata information that I need. So then I can just return this images thing. And so we could test this by going up here, and if I say images metadata, you can see I'm not getting back the actual image blob. So I just used this, give me all the tables, and then just identify the tables that I want, and then just include them in the select here, and then we get the results that we want. I could have done something similar up here on just getting an individual image, but it's sometimes it's good to show you the different ways you can do things. So I think I've covered everything that I want to cover in here. Like I said, this is just a series of short videos building up to a larger app. I'll spend some time thinking about what I'm going to do next. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Bye.